What's up, Cause Effect here, DEF CON here at Voting Village. My name is Harry Hurston. I'm uh, the founder, co-founder and co-organizer of the Voting Village. We are here to educate people about the reality of voting machines, especially now in an era when false claims of rigging and whatnot is done, so the people understand exactly how these machines work, what are the vulnerabilities, how you mitigate against the vulnerabilities. We have a lot of machines here that we are currently using around the country. These machines are, are old machines. Uh, this machine is, is the design is from mid 80s. It's still widely in use. This is the first machine ever hacked and I did that hack in 2005. So because this, this machine was designed at the time when cyber war was bad science fiction. This doesn't have the capabilities of hardware, which modern general purpose computers, this doesn't have an operating system. So this has a very small footprint and very small attack surface because the time era when this was built, everything was minimalistic by necessity, not by design. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this machine and, and talk specifically about the vulnerability that you pointed out. Well, it doesn't have a hard drive, it doesn't have flash, uh, the software itself is an EEPROM. It doesn't have any other storage than the memory card, which is the vulnerability of this machine. However, because it's a, it's a removable memory, uh, memory card, you can mitigate against this by making two-man rule on everybody who is touching it, programming it, and making the physical security to fight against the, the, vul the vulnerability on the technology. And this is very normal. These machines are old that require a lot of physical security, all of which is missing. Always when we show a vulnerability, what happens is people are claiming, well, that won't happen in the real world because there's such a, a high physical security. And that's never true. If somebody got their hands on this memory card, was able to what, manipulate the information and then put it back in and then put it back in inventory, that would be the problem, right? Yeah, in this machine, because the software itself cannot be altered. The software is in the EEPROM and the machine is incapable, physically incapable of reprogramming its programming. The only way you hack this is using the memory card by introducing from there, for example, a wrong ballot definition or manipulate the vote counters. So everything is on a memory card and it's it's really, this is not about code injection. This is more about very rudimentary old ways of manipulating, like a car automator running over. This actually has an un un unsigned integer, so it has an integer overflow problem. Okay, so now we covered a, a very old school voting machine here, still in use. Memory card is the major vulnerability. Do you want to take a look at another one that you yes, pointed out? Yes, absolutely. And this is a high-speed paper ballot scanner. These are used in major cities and in vote centers to, uh, to high-speed process a lot of ballots. This is still in use, and this is a way more modern technology than the previous one. This actually does have hard drives. This actually has an Ethernet. This is a this is the, the two decades more modern machine. So, what I'm guessing here. When with the hardware inside, and we can't take a look, obviously, or can, I don't know if we can. Yes, we can. Ah, perfect. Um, just to get an idea of the difference and what, what would be considered an upgrade, right? So here we have a general purpose computer, uh, which is running operating system, unlike the previous one. We have hard drive, we have Ethernet, we have network capabilities. This is actually a dangerous machine. This is a multi-house horsepower en uh, engine. And when we accidentally install paper ballot, put the metallic plate in one study, it flew across the room and buried itself to a drywall. That's the speed the paper goes through. So you can kill yourself with this voting machine. So this is this is not just a voting machine, this is possibly an, an assassin. Yeah, it, 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 it really goes fast because it's <laughs> a high-speed scanner. And the vulnerability of this machine is again removal media. That's a chip drive, and those chip drives are forever old. You, could, you saw the in, insert in, in the other side. This runs a QNX operating system, and if you have a file with a certain name, it automatically executes that with the full root permissions without asking user permission or notifying user. So you only need to have one certain name of file on a zip drive, and it's done. And then you're in. That's then you're in. So it's, I mean, it's, it sounds like they just made it easy, as easy as possible for you to gain access. Yeah, well, it's, it's I mean, convenience. It's convenience. <laughs> uh, remember, again, these machines were designed at a time when cyber war was not existing. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, you have to keep reminding me of that, right? Because that is an interesting thing. We live in a day right now when it's so relevant. 
and just a couple decades ago. Bad science fiction. Yeah. Nobody would have believed important. everything what is today casual and common knowledge would have never passed as a movie script because it would have been too stupid for people to think this can be actually real. All right, this technology actually comes from 2000s. And thank God this machine is on its way out because this is the second most dangerous way of voting. The most dangerous way of voting is internet voting because it's beyond our human capabilities to do internet voting. It cannot be done. This is a touchscreen voting where there's no paper record. Everything is just in electronic form. So it's a touchscreen, you vote, there's no auditability, and if you alter the memory of the of, and memory conscious, there's no recovery. Your vote, you cannot do anything else. You cannot find if it was hacked. We actually ran a test election a few years ago with it, with this machine. Uh, it was a very tight race between George Washington and Benedict Arnold, <laughs> and our benign dictator, Dark Tang and won, and he wasn't even on a ballot. <laughs> so you were able to switch out names and add completely new apl uh, applicants or candidates into the, into the exactly. machine? Exactly, but the funniest thing is when you did that hack, you cannot recover, you cannot find the original actual votes where people were voting. So it's done, it's done, because there's no paper ballot where you can come back. So that's why, thank God, See. these machines are on the way out. Yeah. So, in fact, that this was the newest of the three that we looked at, but Correct. this is the most vulnerable and the most dangerous machine that we can This is the most dangerous because if something goes wrong, you don't have a recovery. No recovery. And, of course, the funniest thing about this machine is that this card reader is not clued in, and if you plug it out and you boot it, it goes to supervisor most, because why not? And then you can actually plug it back in, in a convenience of secrecy of, of, of the booth. So why would you do that? And funniest thing is, the machines, we have one more machine which is over 10 years newer than this, and it has the same feature that if you jam the, the smart card, it goes to supervisor mode. So, could we? Can you do like a, a just a quick example of you messing that? Because I think we got to see this one, and I know you just brought that card out, but I would love to see supervisor mode and kind of. Here we are. So, once you are in okay. the supervisor mode, then you can change settings. This obviously has a network. There's a lot of other capabilities, which also means that one thing what you can do with this not only you can alter one election, but there's also a proof of concept. We developed a voting machine virus, which can travel from one voting machine to another and infect the whole precinct. Wow. So all you need is access to one and you could potentially spread. Or not even one. You can. It's also good enough that if you get the central headquarters uh, election management system, you can spread then one to every precinct and it spreads around there. So this is a window, very old unpatched version of Windows CE and obviously very dangerous uh, machine to be used and, and thank God, as I said, we are out of the DRE voting. DRE voting, uh, voting is a very bad idea. The only worse idea would be internet voting. Okay. What, what is the solution here? Because we're seeing a lot of machines that are in use. So what do we do? American elections are uniquely complex, and outside the smallest uh, jurisdictions, you have to use voting machines, and you cannot trust the voting machines. The problem with the ballot marking devices, which is the newest technology introduced, it's a touch screen, when after you make your choices, it will print out the ballot. That is not any more voter's choice, it's a hearsay by computer. And we have been showing it in, in studies that both voters don't find if the vote if the ballot marking device is lying so the, the safest way to vote is hand mark paper ballot use a voting machine scanner like the first one we saw or that one to scan them and then mandatory risk limiting audit to figure out if the machine provided the right correct outcome of the election you never trust always verify and you use hand mark paper ballots so that you can verify and if there needs to be a recount obviously then you have archived materials that, that mark votes. Yes, the security problem of voting is uniquely hard because we have secret ballot at the same time as auditability. S secret ballot means that even if I want to reveal how I voted, I shouldn't be able. Because if I can be coerced to tell how I voted and prove it, then I can buy my vote, vote can be bought, sell, and I can be bo coerced. How much would it cost to buy you? I won't be for sale, but you know, everything has also price. Exactly. 
Everything. Everything has its price. I'm curious. Do you vote? Of course. Okay. All right. And and everybody should vote. If you, whenever you are eligible to vote, please vote. Democracy is only working with the participation, and apathy is as dangerous as dangerous to elect, uh, the democracy as any kind of malfeasance in, in, and, and shenanigans in the, in the process. Thank you, man. All right, thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you.